Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a French comedy film called Serial Teachers. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In a school in France, 86% of students have successfully graduated this year, which is the highest record of all time. They run around and dance, hopeful for a thriving college life ahead. Meanwhile, in Jules Ferry High School, the environment is the exact opposite. The news channels report it as the least ranked high school of the year, with only a 12% pass rate. The academy inspector, deputy inspector, and the principal are in a meeting, discussing the students' poor performance. They have employed the best teachers in the city, and the students aren't dumbasses either, which makes it difficult for them to understand the cause of failure. If the pass rate doesn't rise up to at least 50% this year, the sponsors will stop funding the school and it will have to be closed. To avoid this, they come up with a new strategy that no one has ever tried before. They want to appoint the worst teachers in the country. Since the best ones didn't give them the results they wanted, they are hopeful the worst ones will make a difference. That logic checks out. Then, we are introduced to the said worst teachers. First is the aggressive English teacher, Miss Gladys. She is great at what she does, only a little too violent towards the dumb students. Then there is the lazy math teacher, Kutiro. He is so slow that when he goes fishing, the fishes pull him into the water. The sports teacher, Eric, uses anything heavy to lift and anything flat as a frisbee. Fourth is the chemistry teacher, Albert. His experiments are life-threatening, and so are his classes. Maurice is the teacher of philosophy who says things in riddles and makes them more complicated than they really are. Amina is the French teacher, the hottest one in the lot. Students love her class because of her excellent teaching methods, but mostly because of the revealing clothes. Then there is Polichon, the history teacher. He is shy and chaotic, definitely the one who used to be bullied in high school. The team of losers enters the school together, catching everyone's attention. Gladys takes the first class and starts hitting the kids with pieces of chalk instantly. She seems to enjoy bullying them more than teaching them. One of the students is Nectarine, the usual teacher's pet and the only one who studies. She skipped the grade last year because of her amazing grades and doesn't forget to mention it every chance she gets. Then we are introduced to the class clown who is always late, Bouillard. He enters the classroom and instantly becomes a victim of Gladys' assault. The entire classroom is stunned by her unique but mostly frightening personality. The next class is Kutiro's. Being the lazy man he is, he comes 20 minutes late and takes an extra 10 minutes to write his name on the board. Then he takes a smoke break and stays outside until the period ends. The history teacher Polichon enters the wrong classroom and finds the German teacher in the front. He mistakes her for a student and asks her to join the others. The teacher tries explaining, but Polichon doesn't listen. After awkwardly fidgeting with papers and talking about Napoleon for a few minutes, he is told he is in the wrong class. He apologizes before rushing out. At lunch break, Polichon and the German teacher share glances, indicating the start of a romantic relationship. During gym class, the sports teacher makes the students climb trees without any safety measures. When they hurt themselves, he dismisses it as one of many problems they will face in life. Then, it's time for the student's favorite, Miss Amina's class. The guys look at her for the first time and forget to blink. When she brings them out of their heads, all of them fall down without missing a beat. Bouillard arrives a bit late, but has the same reaction. In the philosophy period, the teacher puts his coat over a guy's head and calls him a talking coat hanger. He explains how a hanger cannot talk for the entire period. Lastly, in chemistry class, Albert mixes some chemicals, but because of a slight mistake in measurement, the entire class is covered in fizz. After school, Polichon approaches the French teacher and apologizes for his mistake. He also picks her up in a hug, unaware of proper etiquette, having never touched a woman in his life. The seven losers teach the students for a week, which is the most chaotic week in the history of Jules Ferry. By the weekend, parents arrive with complaints, like the chemistry teacher burning someone's bag and the sports teacher sending students home with a different broken bone every day. It is the last straw for the principal before calling the academy deputy inspector. But the man couldn't care less how he handles the situation. He was the one who pitched the idea of worst teachers, but his dismissal of the situation makes the principal think he had an ulterior motive behind it. The next day, the principal takes matters into his own hands and tries his best to mold the teacher to his ways. 
First, he glues the pieces of chalk onto the table so Gladys won't be able to hit the students. When she resorts to the duster instead, the string attached to it hits her back in the face. Then, when it is Katiro's class, he brings out a picnic chair to rest on it as usual. But this time, a short circuit causes a small explosion, making him jump. When he decides to end the class early, the principal pretends to be the clock on the wall and reminds him of the time. Polichon's problem is that he cannot stop talking about Napoleon, so the principal interrupts the class with a PowerPoint presentation on the topic he is supposed to teach. For the chemistry period, he locks all the chemicals except for water so that no more explosions take place, also presumably so that the students learn nothing. To get rid of Amina's revealing clothes, the radiator is broken and everyone has to wear layers of clothing. In the meantime, Polichon is still attempting to impress the German teacher. He asks his colleagues for help who suggest he act tough whenever she is near. Polichon takes the suggestion seriously and pretends to be a typical bad boy after school. He shows off his non-existent muscles and asks her out on a date. However, he realizes he is doing something wrong when she refuses. It is finally the end of the term. The teachers have been depressed lately because of all the restrictions they have been put through. So, when the deputy inspector comes for an inspection, they complain about all their problems. He sees a pattern that the principal is too invested in the teacher's way of working. Hence, he gives them the absolute right to their classes. Now that the group can do whatever they want, they do not hold back. Polichon teaches about Napoleon while cosplaying as him, while a lazy Katiro rests on a hammock for the entire class. In one of Gladys's classes, Bouillard pulls on Nectarine's hair, making her whine. As a solution, Gladys chops off her ponytail. Since she has the right to do whatever she wants in class, the principal cannot do anything about it. The chemistry teacher takes the most advantage of the freedom. His experiments go from absurd to life-threatening. Almost every class ends up in some kind of explosion. The philosophy teacher makes his pupils walk around naked to teach them about nature in its deepest form. These teachers should all go to jail. By now, the school has caught the neighborhood kids' attention. They hear stories about a hot teacher, explosive classes, and classes where they can get naked. In a few weeks, people start to break into the school to attend it. The attendance percentage goes up 120%. The school turns into a club, and the teachers become celebrities among the newcomers. Meanwhile, Polichon is still trying his best to impress the German teacher. This time, he attempts to sweep her off her feet by pretending to be a prince on a horse. The plan fails, though, when the horse runs away. As the final term nears, the extra students are refrained from coming to school. The others take a mock test to prepare for the finals. However, the results show that the pass rate has dropped from 12% to 3%. The teachers do not know what to think of it. The principal is also shocked that the pass rate could go any lower. He meets the deputy inspector and tells him that his plan is not working. It is then revealed that the man never wanted it to work. He wants to get the pass rate as low as possible so the academy inspector would be fired and he could take over the position. He knew the new teachers would fail, which is why he appointed them. Polichon overhears the conversation and runs to his colleagues to tell them. After finding out they are France's worst teachers, the group is determined to prove otherwise. Polichon gets the idea to steal the exam papers. The others join in and they start making an elaborate plan to do so. They even practice dodging bullets in case they are caught. Then, the execution day finally arrives. The group joins a crowd protesting outside the ministry. When the police chase the crowd away, Gladys lies down on the road and goes unnoticed. Then, while Gladys and Katiro wait outside, the others barge into the ministry. Amina distracts the guards with her beauty, letting the group enter the building and into the protected room. But an unpredicted problem arises when the safe has a lock that needs a six-digit code to be opened. Suddenly, Katiro walks in, proving that they didn't have to do all the work to get inside. Together, they assume the code must be the day the minister won the election, which turns out to be true. In the following scene, the students are asked to take a second mock test. The group hints at how important the questions are and starts the test. However, they find out that they accidentally stole the middle school exam papers. Still, the students appreciate the effort they made. With only two weeks left for the finals, everyone loses hope. Polichon goes to the principal with his resignation letter, knowing that nothing he does will help the students now. 
As he is leaving the school premises, the German teacher expresses how disappointed she is in him for running away like a coward. Her comment makes him realize he is not ready to give up yet. He motivates the students and the teachers, citing Napoleon, and convinces them to study hard for the next two weeks. Starting that day, the philosophy teacher drinks before teaching, so the students understand what he is saying. Gladys allows them to wear helmets so they won't be hurt when she throws pieces of chalk at them, and the sports teacher trains them harder than ever. Three weeks later, the results are published. To everyone's surprise, the students show the biggest rise in pass rate, but it only reaches 49%. This means the teachers are unsuccessful and the school won't be in operation anymore. The deputy inspector celebrates his win by drinking in front of his boss and revealing it was his plan all along. What an idiot. Just as everything is going downhill, the principal receives a letter that changes everything. Because of Bouillard's repeated bad performance in school, he is expelled. One less failure means that the pass rate rises to 50%, all thanks to Bouillard's stupidity. Everyone celebrates the win and treats him like a prince. After that, as per the agreement, the teachers are allowed to transfer to any school they want. But they all decide to remain in Jules Ferris for the half of the students who didn't pass. Somewhere else, the deputy inspector is riding a boat on a river filled with crocodiles. It turns out he was transferred to a rural village by his boss. In the last scene, we see the German teacher kiss Polichon before they click a group picture for the yearbook. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.